Okay, now I'm going to be answering part D from the June 2019 Core Mathematics C34 International A-Level paper. I've already answered part A, B, and C in the previous video, which the link for that should show in the card, which will be on the top of the screen here, and also on um, one of the end screen videos, I'll put the previous video in there, so you can go and see the previous parts if need be. So the t saying, hence, find the area of triangle CAB, giving you answers to three significant figures. Okay, so what we've done already is we found the angle theta between um, AC and AB. We know the vector from A to B, and we also know its magnitude. And we know the magnitude of this was, this. the magnitude of this was 75, root 75. The magnitude of AC was root 50. Okay, so we know the magnitudes of these vectors. In fact, I don't, I won't put equals. Okay, I won't put equals because they're not, that's not the vector, that's the magnitude. So I'll just make a bit of a space there. Just be careful not to write things that are not true. So the magnitude of the vector A to B and the magnitude of A to C. So we know the magnitudes of the vectors, we know the ve vectors themselves, and we also know the angle between them. So that's enough for us to find the area of this triangle. Okay, it says hence means using what we've just done. So that's what we've just done. We found basically all of these things. <clears throat> we found the magnitude of AC, the magnitude of AB, and the angle between them. That's why this is only worth two marks, because everything we need has already been done in the previous question. So we can say the area is given by a half times AB sine theta. So that's a half times um, the magnitude of one of the vectors, which is going to be root 75, times the magnitude of the other vector, which is root 50, times the sine of the angle between them, which is the sine of 62.790. So I use it in a more accurate form, and that should give, give us the area of this triangle ABC. Okay, I'll put this, actually, I'll put, what I'll do is I'll draw it in a different color. So I'll make the line a bit thinner. I'll make it in a different color, the line, let's say blue color. So what we're finding is the area of this triangle A, B, C. That's what we're finding. So basically, we, we know the length of AC, which is root 50. We know the length of AB, which is root 75. So the area of a triangle can be given by a half times the length of two sides times the sine of the angle between them. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So let's get the calculator. Okay, we still have the value of the angle that we found in the last part. So we can use that. So I can say the sine of the angle, sine of the answer. So I've got that part now. I've got to multiply that by root 75. And I've got to multiply that by root 50. And I've got to multiply that by a half. Oops, 0 0.5. Okay, that will give us 27.230, 27.230, dot, dot, dot. It says three significant figures, so that's going to give me 27.2 square units, because it's, that looks like squints. Let me make that neater. Square units. 27.2, let me put units squared. Units squared, whatever units they are. So there we have the area to three significant figures of our triangle ABC. Okay, good. Now it says the point D lies on the line L. Given that the area of triangle CAD is twice the area of triangle CAB, find the two possible position vectors of the point D. So I'm just going to make a new diagram here. Um, let's say that's our line L. Okay, we have A and we had C. And we had B. Was that right? Something like that, yeah. Okay, so we have A, and we have C, and we have B. And it tells us that the line, the point D lies on the line L. Uh, given that the area of triangle CAD is twice the area of CAB, find the two possible position vectors of the point D. Okay, now, so you notice that You've got CAB, which is this triangle here, 
we know its area, um, and we know that the area of triangle CAD is twice CAB, and D lies on the line L. So D can be anywhere along this line. Okay, somewhere along this line is going to be D. Can't be anywhere. It can't be anywhere else apart from on the line. But the area of the triangle CAD has to be twice the area of the angle CAB. So I could put D over here, for example, such that the distance from A to B and the distance from B to B, B to D will be the same. In that case, this triangle ACD or CAD will be twice the area of angle CAB because they have the same vertical height. You can say the vertical, the vertical height of this triangle is going to be from the vertex to the base. So you can see both of these triangles have that same vertical height. The difference is the base. So if I make this length the same as that length, then CAD will have twice the area of CAB because its base will be twice as long. The vertical height will be the same. So if you double the base, you double the area at the same height. So if I can, if, if I can, um, that's one possible, let's, let's call that D1. That's one possible place for D where the, the length AB and the length um, BD1 have to be the same. That will be one scenario. If I can work out the position vector of D such that um, its distance from the distance from A to B is the same as the distance from B to D, that will be one possible position of D such that the area of the triangle CAD will be twice CAB. Now there's also another possibility if I have D somewhere on this side. So I need CAD to be twice CAB. So I need the, the side D or the point D to be somewhere placed over here such that the distance between AD is twice the distance between AB. So I've got to have this. This is my second possible position. To do that in a better color. Yeah, okay. So that's the other possible scenario. Okay, that's the other possible scenario that the, the distance from A to D2 is equal to twice the distance AB. Okay, if that's, and it also, of course, in the opposite direction. So if that's the case, then I'm going to have. Um, I'm going to have, you can say twice the distance, um, twice of B to A, I can say. So it's in the same direction. I'll do it in terms of vectors. So A to D must be twice the vector from B to A. Okay, twice that vector. That way I will be able to find the position vector of, of D quite easily. Okay, so now what do I know? Okay, so I need to find the possible position of D. Now, what I know already, and it, the position vector is relative to O. Okay, it's relative to the origin. So, what I know already in this situation is the following. I know the vector from O to A. Okay. That's what we've, that's, that was a position vector of O. In fact, I know the, 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 the equation of the line was R equals, and it was a position vector of A plus the direction AB. So, let me just go back and get those things. Okay, so that was a position, that is the equation of the line L, and this was the position vector of the point A we chose. So this is the vector 2 minus 3 minus 2 from O to A, and that was the direction of A to B. It was going this way, from A to B. We found the vector A to B. Okay, so now if I continue going, so I know that this is when you've got, if, if you put lambda equals 1, okay, it should give us a position vector, but let's just check that. If I put lambda equals 1, it should give us the position vector of B. Let's see if that works, because we used A to B uh, to work out this um, direction. So if, let's see if that works to make sure. So you have minus 2, sorry, you have 2, and you have th minus 3 and minus 2, plus 1 times uh, 1, 5, and 7, and that gives us 2 plus 1, which is 3, minus 3 plus 5, which is um, 2, and minus 2 plus 5, which is plus 7, which is 5. 3, 2, 5. That should be the position vector of B. Let's just check if that's correct. 
325. Yes, so we, I'm sure now that uh, when I, lambda is equal to 1, it will take me from A to B. Okay, therefore, if I use lambda equals 2, it will take me from A to D, and it will give me the position vector of D. Okay, that will give me the position vector of D, because I'll go from O to A, and then twice this direction vector. So twice 157 will take me to D. So if I put lambda equals 2, I'm going to find one possible position for D. So I'll have the position vector of D is going to be given by 2 minus 3, 2. That takes me from 0 to A, plus 2 times the direction from A to B, which is 157. And that's going to give me 2 plus 2, which is 4, minus 3 plus 10, which is 7, and 2 plus 14, 2 plus 14, which is 16. 4, 7, 16 is going to be the, the position vector of D, because you're going to go from O to A. Ah, sorry, that's a minus 2. Don't make silly mistakes. Sorry about that. You have to be very careful. See, I forgot to write the minus. It's a very, very common mistake. So minus 2 plus 14, which is 12. So 4, 7, 12 is a position vector of D. So you can say one possible position vector of D is 4, 7, 12. So that's one of the answers. And the other one is for D2. So this is for D1. For D2, this point here, we need to go from O to A. And then we need to do, go in the opposite direction. Okay. Um, of B, but we need to go twice that distance of B to A. So it's basically going to be minus lambda is going to be negative 2. Okay, because it will be twice the distance from A to B, but in the opposite direction. So we'll have the position vector of D2, that's for D1, D2 is going to be 2 minus 3 minus 2 plus, and we're going to have a minus 2, so minus 2 times minus 2 times the, the direction of A to B, which is 157. That minus here will make it go in the opposite direction. And that gives us 2 minus 2, which is 0, minus 3 minus 10, which is minus 13, and minus 2 minus 14, minus 14, which is minus 16. And so therefore, we have the two possible answers. You have O to D1, position vector of one of the points, is going to be 4, 7 and 12 and O to D2 the position vector of the second point is going to be 0 minus 13 and minus 16 and those two positions will give us an area twice the area of A B C because this triangle's area will be doubled if you have the triangle um, C A D this way or C A D that way because C A D this way they will have the same vertical height but the base will be twice the base of this and CAD this way, again, they'll have the same vertical height, but the base here will be double, okay, the base here. So we're, we finished this question. Um, I hope that was clear for you. So those are the two possible position vectors of D. Okay, good. If you'd like to see the previous part of the question, I'm going to try and put on the card on the top. I'll also put it on one of the videos, uh, one of the uh, end screens. I'll link to the video previously. And then I'll also put... Um, and the rest of the questions, when I start answering them from this paper, I'll collect them together in a playlist, which I'll put somewhere over here. And I'll also put the, all the other questions I've done on vectors from C34 and C and the new P4 in um, a playlist over here. Thank you for watching. I hope everything was clear. And I'll see you again in another video. Goodbye.